I am so excited for Xenoblade 3 and to show just how excited I am and just to kind of challenge myself, I wanted to 3D model the flute from the trailer. So here we have the finished product. Now in this video I'm going to walk you through kind of the steps I took to make it. Uh, this is all 3D printed and painted, so I think it looks very nice. It isn't perfect by any means, but I it was a good challenge for myself and I had a lot of fun while doing it. Um, so this was kind of the finished project and this was the prototype as to where it all started to see what I could do, where I wanted to go, if I wanted to make it life size, which I would say this is pretty close to life size. This is about 24 inches long and I think that's probably about what it was, at least when you kind of hold this up and think about the game model and how big his hands are, this, is, this lines up. Now the question you're all wondering is, does it play? And that is unfortunately no. There's a dowel rod in here to hold all the pieces together in line because it's printed out in chunks. So unfortunately it does not play. Also in the like three actual snippets of footage where we see a flute or this flute, uh, there, we can't really see where the holes are or how the mouthpiece looks. So for now it's just a nice decorative model and I think it was a fun challenge. So I'm gonna take you through how I made it. The very first thing I did was I opened up Inventor and I just started experimenting. Now I had never done anything like this with a cylinder before, where I made all these complicated wrapping shapes around a cylinder. So I ended up using the emboss feature in Inventor to create this design. One of the things you have to keep in mind when making this is you have to make the one edge connect to the other side. So you have to have a fluent design and honestly the flute in the game obviously had that and I think I was able to replicate that pretty well. Once I did that, I began slicing and getting them ready for printing. So I broke the model up into a couple different chunks with a hollow uh, center, that way I could put a dowel through them. So here's a quick little snippet of one of the pieces printing. I used my DaVinci Pro printer. I don't really recommend it, but that's the one that I used for this project. All in all, it took about 12 hours of printing for me to get my flute printed. Uh, you can see all the chunks right here. There's a dowel rod for comparison. As you can see, the parts have very nice detailing on them. I really like the way the model looks. Uh, it's not very easy to paint on, but uh, we'll learn that a little later in the process. There's the very last cylinder because that third one is just a cylinder. There's nothing else on it. No cool details on that one. Here was everything after I got it glued up. From here, I just had to fill in those lines the best I could, or those little seams, sand them down, and prime it. Here it is after it was primed and painted. So I used an earth brown I, it wasn't what I was expecting. I wanted a flat black because that's more so what the flute from the trailer is. It's more so flat black, but honestly, the color's growing on me. This step was the most tedious of the entire project, and I knew it was going into it. I used a variety of different techniques and to try and achieve the end result. Honestly, I think the Q-tip ended up as my favorite just because you can't really, it, the, there's no bristles to fall down any deeper. Uh, it, it's also helpful to have a little thing of the brown or the base color paint with you, so when you do accidentally slip off or get any on it, you can just brush the brown or black right back on. Uh, one of the last things I had to do for a, the little decoration, de decorative bits was these two turquoise little circles. Now, there could be more turquoise tur circles on there, but uh, from what we saw, there's two. So I modeled in two, and there's me painting one of them. This next step was not going to be fun either. As you can see, obviously there's red on the flute, and it's very faded in nicely. Trying to achieve this was going to be tricky, and I knew it. I taped it off and sprayed it. Now, it went further than I wanted because there was it was pretty windy, and I didn't account for that until I, looked, until I was looking at it and I'm like, oh shoot, I'm going, it's blowing way too far down. But 
honestly, it gives it a nice little look. I did touch up the gold just to kind of remove it. And there is the finished product on my Xenoblade shelf. Honestly, I'm really happy with it. It was a fun little project. It took me about a day and a half to do, and it fits great with all the rest of my Xenoblade merchandise. Pretty much everything here is official, except for those three core crystals and that Rex figure, or Rex Amiibo by Gonda Chris. I'm really excited. I love covering Xenoblade on this channel. A couple of us members here are just huge Xenoblade fans. And I love it when I can share Xenoblade content with you guys. Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this inspired you to challenge yourself or try and make your own video game themed decoration or item or weapon or whatever you want to make. Once again, there will be a link to Thingiverse down below in the description if you would like to download this model, whether you want to use it for any sort of animation or rendering or printing it or remixing it feel free to do so. And I'm very excited for September for Xenoblade 3 to release. I'm sure we are all very excited. So thanks again for watching.